aren't many movies like There's Nothing out there, especially for when it was released. Being a self-referential horror film in 1991 is bonkers to think about. The main character has seen every horror film and he knows every trope. The characters poke fun at all the tropes found in these types of movies. They aren't dumb characters, but in fact, they may be some of the smartest characters written in horror movie history. Well, let me tell you something. That creature out there is not reality. So you're saying we're in a movie? It's a distinct possibility. Or maybe not. There's Nothing Out There was directed by then 20-year-old Rolf Knafsky. Rolf was a longtime horror fan wanting to ride the coattails of directors like Sam Raimi. And Raimi's influence is evident throughout the film. Moving and sweeping cameras are everywhere. Now, being a fan of Raimi myself, it's always fun and a joy to watch this kind of inventive filmmaking. Rolf wanted to make a run-of-the-mill creature feature and then got a bright idea. What if one of the characters in the film knew he was in a horror movie? It's a novel concept for 1991, and since the horror market was booming in the late 80s, why not mortgage your parents' house and use all of your savings to make a surefire horror hit? Well, unfortunately, the horror market crashed hard in the early 90s, and the director of There's Nothing Out There found that there's no audience out there for his film. Critics were relatively high on the film, though, and the horror fans who did see the movie really enjoyed it. But no major company understood the premise, and they didn't want to release it themselves. So, should There's Nothing Out There be overlooked like it was when it came out? Or is this just a case of a great film being released at the wrong time? Well, let's dig a little bit deeper and find out. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. The movie starts where most movies of this era end up, and that's the video store. A stranger walks through the doors while the video store clerk puts a few titles back on the shelf and... We get a cool little chase scene where some awesome horror titles are literally flying off the shelf. And just as it starts to get good, it quickly ends as the girl wakes up. Luckily, she's okay. She's alive, and that's what's important. But she was driving her dad's car, so maybe she'll be dead after all. Well, if her dad doesn't kill her, the alien falling from the sky definitely will. The alien's tentacles smash the car and... <laughs> opening credit sequence. For 1991, this credit scene is way ahead of its time. It's this awesome computer screensaver. Computer graphics weren't really a thing in 91, but soon it would be huge. Oddly enough, this opening wasn't even made with a computer, but instead it's a bunch of matte paintings used with some zooms and some fade techniques. It's impressive stuff nonetheless. The song used sounds like a techno version of songs you would find in The Outer Limits or The Twilight Zone. After the credits, we open on a school. This teacher here is trying to teach the victims of our film, but there's only a few seconds left before summer vacation. The kids get out of school and of course they talk about their plans for the summer. This ragtag group of kids are going to the house by the pond for the summer. And on their way to the house, they see the wrecked car from the opening sequence. The police can't seem to find the body though. Mike, played by Craig Peck, warns the group of friends that maybe they shouldn't be spending the weekend at the house. After all, he's seen every horror film. Don't forget, I have rented out every single horror film on videotape and what we just went through is called a warning stage. Wait. What year is this made? 1991? This is a smartly written character for 91. In fact, it reminds you of another horror icon. If they watch prom night, they'd save time. There's a formula to it. A very simple formula. Everybody's a suspect. You'll either love Mike or you'll hate him. Some may find him annoying, but as a longtime horror fan who knows all the tropes, I find it hilarious when someone points out the obvious. There's Nothing Out There is a funny movie, but it's not really a comedy horror film. The movie never falls into the traps of a comedy. It's a serious movie that has characters that recognize horror tropes and makes fun of them. Like how every horror movie needs a smart nerd. Really, Mike, it's logically stupid for you to be worried by this. Logically stupid? Is that what you said? Logically stupid? Is this the person representing brilliance on our trip? Well, when the kids get to the house, Mike cautiously unpacks. 
He believes there might be something out there. And hey, there is something out there. It's the force from the Evil Dead. What are you doing in this film? A van pulls up full of druggy punk teens, and they all get naked and skinny dip in the pond. But wait, they aren't supposed to be here. But what are you doing at my house? House? Is this the camp by the lake? No. The house by the pond. Oh shit! Man. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. We thought this was a camp by the lake. <laughs> we'll get it in a few minutes. <laughs> Those kids are in the wrong movie. Mike is convinced that something weird is going on, but everyone tries to calm him down. Weird things begin to happen, like finding green goo, people going missing, and girls getting brainwashed. With Mike's infinite knowledge of horror films, can he and his friends survive a face-melting alien? Oh, well, that's disgusting. There's Nothing Out There is a blast of a film. It's witty, smart, fast-moving, inspiring, funny, and totally worth a watch. A lot of work went into this movie. There was three weeks of pre-production, a week where they choreographed the fight scenes, a week of line work, as well as a week where they shot the whole thing on VHS video. Shooting on film is expensive, but since they basically already made the movie before shooting with film, the film process was relatively smooth. Rolf was fortunate to get a crane operator for relatively cheap, and it really ups the production value. A lot of great shots make the film feel a lot more professional, even if some amateurish elements still flourish. There's Nothing Out There is quickly becoming one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I originally watched it about a year or two ago, and after the first viewing, I knew I had to talk about it on this channel. So fast forward to the present day, where I sit down to watch the film again with my notepad in my hand, pen ready to go, ready to take notes, and 91 minutes later, and I realized that I didn't write down a single thing. Crap! I forgot what I was doing and I just watched the movie again. Well, I decided to put the movie on one more time, but this time with an audio commentary. Again, not too enamored by the film and didn't write any notes. Watched another commentary and crap. It wasn't until my fifth viewing where I finally started writing stuff down. I kept finding myself watching the movie rather than being critical. It's a captivating film in that regard. I talked about the audio commentaries and hot dang, there are a lot of them, at least on the out of print Vinegar Syndrome release. This release is perfect. You have four audio commentaries, plenty of interviews with the cast and crew, a few short films by the director, bloopers, audition tapes, and rehearsal shots, all with commentary. It's a loaded release that perfectly tells the tale behind the camera. Like most low-budget films, sometimes knowing the effort that went into the movie is better than the movie itself. If you can find the out-of-print Vinegar Syndrome release for a reasonable price, pick it up now. It's a must-own! Trust me, I could go on and on about this film. I could talk about the feud with Bonnie Bowers or how Rolf's father was a longtime editor. I could talk about Rolf and Craig Peck going to school together. I could point out the crew in a few shots or even talk about some of the goofs. There are so many things that I could get into, but I don't want to ruin that experience for you. Seriously, I can't recommend this movie enough. It's a really good time, and it's an inspiration for any young filmmakers. And that's all I have for tonight, so as always, Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and remember, there's nothing out there. Ah!